financial industry is moving extremely fast. But as payments speed up, how will compliance keep pace? That was a subject matter for many at Cybus 2019. The future of payments and banking is all about real-time payments, compliance and actually leveraging the data that's going to come from open banking. How do we meet our regulatory requirements for sanctions compliance in various jurisdictions? How do we meet privacy requirements and how do we manage fraud risks as well? In 2018, the UK experienced over £350 million of scams on faster payments. Mm. You put in more checks and balances and more friction, you slow real-time payments down so they're no longer real-time. Mm. That's the opposing forces that we're facing. In terms of utility mm. building, mm. Uh, having that single identifier in a payment is also something that will allow sanctions screening utility, but also live fraud screening detection possibilities. This isn't just about the systems and the processes, it's also about how consumers are, are vulnerable. Artificial intelligence and machine learning could play a significant role in regulation and compliance. In terms of kind of where the future is going, there's a lot of debate around humans uh, working with machines. And what I quite like, I think, is this view of collective intelligence mm -hmm. and how we can build the collective intelligence of a function to improve the overall effectiveness of the regime. If, if you take a step back, how effective is the regime? It is not very effective. I think if you look at seizures around proceeds of crime, um, various kind of industry estimates, but certainly from a UK perspective, perhaps 200 million is seized in the UK against the backdrop of 13 billion operating kind of in the, in the criminal networks. So that's not very good. That's kind of less than 2% effective. Smart criminals know what the systems that are currently being used are in fact looking for. Dumb criminals do things that get captured by the systems that are currently being used. Stop modeling outliers, start modeling behavior. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you understand the sort of typical behavior in many different perspectives, then you can start to detect the outliers. You may find bad people doing bad stuff in this, in this vertical. By and large, financial crime happens across the financial system. The purpose of money laundering is to move money from institution A to institution B to institution C. So you're really not necessarily going to see something within a single institution. Not everyone has to turn into a data scientist. But it's really, really important for everyone to ultimately be able to understand and use. The point of this effort is fundamentally to find and stop criminals. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, to stop the actual human impact of that crime. What is the way in which institutions will share information about their common customers or about the money movements through those institutions to better detect what's really a, a global scourge, the, the amount of money laundering going on in the financial mm -hmm. services system right now. Debates around whether we should move to global regulations and how we break down the silos of traditional banking were some of the highlights. A lot of the, the major financial crime cases, they, they involve shell companies. Whether it's human trafficking, wildlife trafficking, or terrorist financing, the industry collaboration is key. We now have controls in terms of our uh, transaction monitoring to identify the use of shell companies. I think it's breaking down the silos between banks. Is there a need for every bank to repeat the same process in the chain? I think we could do a lot more sharing in the fraud space. The sharing of analytics and the sharing of typologies can really help us fight that good mm. cause which is, you know, fighting financial crime. I would say, and part of the reason why we're hiring, you know, mm. people with different backgrounds is you want diversity of thought because it changes the perspective and the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And, but you still need the experience so that people know what to look for. When you're coming in and checking that the control framework is operating effectively, one responsibility on the compliance officer is to actually understand what skills are out there in the organization. Having a data scientist is fantastic. But if they don't understand what they're actually looking for, then that's where the compliance has a role to come in and really be help to build out that picture as a responsibility for the organization to make sure that they are doing the right thing. Blockchain initiatives are everywhere and the technology is heralded as the solution to every business problem. But are they a magic wand from a compliance perspective? We were in a world where there was a lot of kind of over-promising and belief that there would be complete disintermediation using public chains and it would be the Bitcoin blockchain and, and no one would be here anymore because we wouldn't need payments and banks and it would all just be computers. 
that sentiment is is definitely um, trailing off, and we're starting to see really responsible innovation and kind of a pragmatic view of the future emerge. I think, frankly, in lots of things in the world, people don't fully trust each other. Any technology that helps us synchronize our information and keep it clean and keep it consistent mm -hmm. becomes a big, uh, big win. When you're talking to regulators, they want to hear how it's going to make information more transparent. How is it going to make KYC more effective? How is it going to make sanctions clearance yeah. more effective? They aren't opposed to you saving money, but that is not the first thing they want to hear. Mm -hmm.